Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Patterns, Level 2, Patterns of Change. When you're looking at patterns, the first thing you should always do is define the system that you're going to investigate. And when it comes to patterns, you should also talk about what type of pattern. So in this video, we're going to be talking about patterns of change, so how things change from one form into another. The nice thing about really carefully observing patterns of change is that you can eventually make predictions based on those. And so I'll leave that right down there. So we're going to be looking at predictions of change. Um, the object that represents patterns is always this clear prism. And the reason why is it allows you to look at different things. As we're thinking of patterns of change, I would also point to the triangle on the, on the end. The triangle in science just stands for delta or stands for change. And so what we're really trying to do is always look at what's the change and how can we use that change to make predictions later. Um, after you've watched this video, you should be able to make predictions based on patterns of change in certain events or in something like the period of a pendulum. But I'm going to start by showing you my thinking as we look at patterns of change in some changing shapes, some pyramids. The first thing we should always do when we're looking at any kind of a, a new system is we should define the system that we're going to investigate. So we're going to be looking at patterns of change in these tiled pyramids. Um, we should put those in orders from pyramid one to pyramid two to pyramid three. And then you can see right here, this is going to be where we start to make our predictions. So these are the pyramids that we're looking at. Now we should start looking at patterns of change. So what patterns of change do we see as we go from pyramid one to two to three? Um, first thing I'm going to do is, is just organize some things that I see. So I'm interested as it changes in the number of pyramids, the color as we move from one pyramid to the next, and also the number of each color. So let me write the descriptors down below. So I've noted that they all have four pyramids. Uh, the color is changing from yellow green to orange red to yellow green. And then the number of each color, there's going to be two triangles within each pyramid um, that are making up those specific colors. But where they're oriented is important to me as well. So let me write that down as a pattern of change as well. Okay, so for pyramids one, two, and three, which are shown horizontally across here, I start to see some patterns. Some things are staying the same, so the number of pyramids is staying the same, the number of each color is staying the same, but certain things are changing, and that's what I'm looking for. And so now that I've done that, what I can do is I can start to make predictions. So predictions for pyramid four, let me write those out. So I think since all the other pyramids have four, this is probably going to have four pyramids within the pyramids as well. If I look at the color, I think this one's probably going to be orange and red because I see a pattern of yellow, green, orange, red, yellow, green. So I'm thinking of orange, red. If I think of how many colors, a, a number of each colors are we going to have, something like that. As far as what the top color is, the one thing I see not represented here would be red. And then the last thing, uh, the center color that I don't see represented would be red as well. So we're re using really concrete examples to do this, but after I've done that, now I can start to make a prediction. So if I read across, I think there are going to be four tiles or four pyramids within this pyramid. I think it's going to be orange and red, and we'll have two of each. Now I just have to figure out how they're oriented. The top color is going to be red. The center color, according to my pattern, is going to be red. And that leaves these two to be the ones on the side. Now, you could have probably just looked at this and, the, and figured it out, but that's not what this lesson is about. This lesson is about looking for patterns of change in as many different ways as we possibly can so when we go into nature, we can make more accurate uh, predictions. 
So I'm gonna clean all this off and I'm gonna give you one that you can investigate on your own. Okay, now that you've seen my patterns of change, I'd like you to try it on your own with these growing trees. Um, so I'd like you to pause the video, then go through and show me what are the patterns of change and what predictions could we make based on that? Then unpause the video, come back, and we'll, we'll compare our thinking. You could always use the Google slide deck that's below the video if you wanna see that, um, but I'll see you in a bit. Okay, a good thing to do when you're looking at patterns of change might be to write all the, all the descriptors that we have across the top or the patterns that we have across the top. I found that number is helpful when I was going through these and also I saw changes in the width. So let me kind of describe what I have below here. Okay, for trees one through three, I've seen the branches doubling. So we had two branches, four branches, and eight branches. The width of those branches is really thick in tree one and gets thinner and then thinner as we go. And then I counted the total number of limbs. So the number of limbs, so this would be one, two, three limbs for tree one. So the next thing I'm gonna do, instead of trying to draw the tree, I'm just gonna look at all these patterns of change so I could make some predictions across the bottom. So the first prediction I would make is that this tree is gonna be called tree four. Um, as far as the number of branches go, since it's doubling each time, I think there's going to be 16. If we think about what about the width of those, um, I think those are gonna be the thinnest as we get to the top. And this one might be a little difficult, but if I go through this, this three plus the four additional branches gives us seven plus the additional eight branches gives us 15. So I'm gonna say around 31 total limbs that we would have in this tree. So now that I've done that, I could sketch out what I think this tree looks like. Um, let me give that a try. So this is my prediction for tree four. It's based on patterns of change that I saw within the system so I can make predictions on this final, on this final uh, row. So that's patterns of change. Now that you've learned how to do it with just concrete examples, I would encourage you to go look at real things. So I've got a phenomena where I have an L block that's falling over or not, depending on which of these uh, uh, squares it's landed on, or you could look at the period of a pendulum. All we're trying to do is see what are the patterns of change and how can we use those to make predictions. Remember, we're always looking for that change in systems. It tells us more about the systems and also what's gonna happen in the future. So that's patterns, uh, level two, patterns of change, and I hope that was helpful.